All right, and welcome back to yet another episode of the Com- Comics Run the World podcast. As always, I'm your host, Orion Scott Comics, or Mateo. And as always, I'm always joined by... Woody, what's up, guys? And today, we're going to be reviewing Ant-Man the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Very heated debate going on on social media right now. Yeah. So we're going to give our, our um, basically our takes on the movie. Woody, you saw it yesterday, right? Yesterday, last night, yeah. Awesome. It's and fresh I had, in my mind. Sweet. And I had the, uh, <laughs> I saw it opening night. Probably shouldn't have, but we'll leave the reviews up till later. But first, before we get into that discussion, um, what are you reading? Are you reading anything uh, on, like, on your own or something like that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've been reading. I just started. It's my first reread. I, I'm kind of trying to start to reread more because it's a comic I consider like one of my favorite comics ever, but I've only read it once through. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to kind of reread stuff. And that is new 52 justice league. Um, nice. I recently got the second volume of the omnibus. So I have the full thing. So I was like, you know what? I'm reading this whole thing. I read the first arc, which is when they first meet up. Cause obviously um, new 52 is right after flashpoint and it's all brand new, you know, yep. nothing exists before this and it's them meeting up <clears throat> as the justice league for the first time ever like <clears throat> I, I love i love that first arc so much because like for example green lantern and flash when they meet batman they're like wait you're you're real i thought yeah I thought you were a myth <laughs> they're like i thought and flash says he thought he was a vampire like right <laughs> and the relationships they build in just that first arc especially green lantern and batman are really great and i i love i love the new 52 i love new 52 justice league um there's still some new 52 runs i need to read but that one is just i love it so much and i'm i'm already loving it more rereading it so yeah awesome yeah i read i read the the entire run like uh, i'd say like three times three really yeah one one, only- I think one time i read it all in one day <laughs> whoa okay. yeah Okay. I read it all. I was like, because I was, it was when I was like, not fresh, fresh into comics, but I already got like a, a grasp of everything. <clears throat> um, so I picked up, I bought all of them, all like volumes one through, I think eight or nine for my local comic book shop. And um, I wanted to read only one, but then I ended up saying at like 2 a.m., finishing the, uh, the last arc of uh, Dark Side War. And. I- <laughs> so good it is so good and it's probably one of my favorite runs of all time probably top five it's okay great. so we both i mean it's in my top five for sure even okay, though i've see. only read it once i i that's why I'm, when i'm like i said i'm trying to to reread stuff to be like mm-hmm. okay you know huh? and i mean right when we stop recording i'm gonna i'm gonna start reading <laughs> the book, so. yeah. what are you reading though i'm i can only read uh read one thing right now because for like four out of my five classes i already have to read like actual books so i really don't have enough time to read comic books but one that i'm like reading one issue a day at least is um uh, george perez and marv wolfen's uh run on the new teen titans okay yeah I, one of my friends recommended it to me and i i was kind of hesitant to pick it up because it was like one of those like older older comic books but then before like uh, the semester started, I was, I read half of of the the first volume in like a day. I just thought, even though like you know, very dense dialogue and stuff like that, it was it's really good dialogue and just like the story and all, I love. But it kind of sucks because I'm reading like three other books in my other classes, so I really don't have enough time. Nor like I'm like burnt out on reading essentially because yeah, I read I all, all, but like. For the other, for like the books I'm reading, um, I'm reading Hard Times. It's a Charles Dar or Charles Charles Darwin or Charles Darwin. Yeah, I oh. think is it Darwin? No, it's Charles Dickens. Oh my god! Yeah, Charles Darwin's the the science guy. <laughs> yeah, he's the he's the <laughs> evolution, evolution guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Charles Dickens, and then I'm reading this poem called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. They made a movie about it, which was really good in my opinion. And the vegetarian, I have to start that right after we get off this podcast, and I'm dreading it. <laughs> but so, not only do comics run the world, but books 
that you have to read for class. General. Yeah, you have to read for class. <laughs> in the world. They run your yeah. life, at least. I, I, I trust me. I know it's running me into the ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I guess we'll just. This is kind of the Ant Man. This is like the finale of our, our Kang saga of the yeah of our... <laughs> the Kang trilogy, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know I know some of your thoughts. So I'll let you go first. I say let's just kind of let's give our brief overview of the movie, and then we can kind of talk about individual plot points that we want to talk about, and then we'll cool. talk about the end credit scene and kind of the future. So, okay, I guess let's do that. All right. I'll keep it short and sweet. Not a fan of I was not a fan of it. I did not like it. And um, I already had very low hopes for it. I wasn't excited for it. I was mainly excited to see Kang. My expectations were low for the movie itself. And I was still yet again disappointed. <laughs> I just didn't like it. I did not like the story. I didn't like like the pacing. Some of the like the writing was pretty bad for some of the characters, especially Cassie Lang, which was kind of upsetting because Cassie Lang is was a character I was very much looking forward to in this movie, but like she was just like written her dialogue was like Disney Ooh, Channel. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. Disney Channel dialogue. I was like they could have done her so much better, but hopefully they'll do it do her do her better um in future projects. But overall did not like it. There are some aspects of it that I did like, but overall those aspects I did like do not outweigh the negatives. So unfortunately I did not like the movie. <clears throat> How about you, Woody? I, like I said, I saw it last night. I've kind of, when I first got out, I was like, you know, I think the best definition of it is mid. Like <laughs> I, I liked things. I didn't like things. I didn't think it was all that good, but I didn't think it was all that bad. It just kind of fell very in the middle for me, but right. The more I've thought about it, it kind of it commits like a cardinal sin for not only a movie but an MCU movie for me, which is it's forgettable and it's skippable because at the beginning of the movie and at the end, every character essentially is in the same spot. Yeah. Like they're they're all outside in the normal world at the beginning and the end. Kang is trapped inside the quantum realm essentially at the beginning and the end. Like no real nothing really happens in this movie. Like right. it all, it all just goes to the same thing. The only thing that happens is they free the, the people of the quantum realm, which I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of like, what's made me dislike it more and more uh, as I've thought about it. It's like, what, what really happened? What was really the purpose of this movie? Because the, the characters really don't, go anywhere i guess there's some character development between uh scott and his daughter but yeah that's kind of my broad overview i mean i completely 100 percent agree with you not thinking about it but yeah but what are you can name some and i can name some <clears throat> what are just some specific story points in the movie whatever you want to talk about that either you loved either you hated you know we can talk about modok we can talk about kang we can talk about Whatever. What are, what are some stuff you've got on your mind that you've got opinions on? All right. I'm going to start off uh, in a positive note. Give okay. a positive thing I liked about the movie. And without a doubt, Kang was fantastic. Jonathan Majors did a really good job with from what was given to him. He Every time like where he was on the, sh on, like, the screen, I just wanted more Kang. Just more of his dialogue and more of his, like, his menacing character on screen. I very much liked his performance as mm -hmm. Kang. He was menacing. He was threatening. And even though this is not the the Kang that we might not see, who knows if it will or not, because post Christ, but we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> but Jonathan Majors is definitely one of like, the highlights of this movie. His performance as Kang was great. And I was excited to see Kang in the future of the MCU before and now after watching this. I'm even more excited to see more Kang in the uh, face. Is this phase five of the MCU? Uh, this was the first movie of five. Oh, okay. Um, I'll, 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 I'll talk about Kang then too. I agree. I will say, um, I, we'll talk about this more when we talk about post credits, but I think this Kang is the MCU's Kang. And I think he's like the main Kang, the prime okay. Kang, like Kang, the conqueror. And I, we will see more of him. I'm, 
I I think we both know that he's not. Yeah. Dead. He's so. I loved him too. It, it, like you said, anytime he was on the screen, he stole the show. He was the best part of the movie without a doubt. Like, not even close. Um, the only issue I have that it's not even an issue. I just think it's kind of funny. Is when he's he first meets Scott. And he's kind of trying – he has to try and get him on his side in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's trying to get him to help him. And the first thing he says is, yeah. have I killed you before? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. It's like one of my favorite lines in the movie because it's just so badass. And he's like, oh, I get him mixed up. But at the same time, you know, that's that's maybe not the best line to open up with if you're trying. To, right. <laughs> but I guess he's not like Loki. You know, he's not very mm-hmm. – uh, he's just more like – you know, he's the conqueror. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought that was funny. But – I mean, there's just so many the the scene of him when Hope Van Dyne is walking up and he's just kind of like chilling on the yeah. on his chair. I like wanted to make that <laughs> my wallpaper. Like he yeah. he steals the show for sure. He's he's great. Definitely. Um, I guess I'll talk about a negative that I didn't like and um just like you touched on it a little bit on the Scott and Cassie dynamic between the movie. I felt like it was very, like, surface-level stuff. It was very, like, you know, generic, broad, not really delving into something new. It's, like, the typical, like, the rebellious daughter, and it's the father trying to help, but he's been absent, and she kind of takes that out on him all the time. And then throughout the movie, they rekindle their relationship, and by the end, they're happy and great once again. So it's... It's pretty surface level stuff. Um, I wasn't a fan of it personally. They could have done a lot more with it. That the whole movie could have been centered around them two trying to like you know rekindle and like build their relationship as a whole. Um, but the, given that and the poor dialogue that Cassie was given, yeah, kind of hinders all of that in my opinion. I'll yeah I'll I'll bounce off that because. I, I I always try and steer away from like blaming an actor or actress for their, because yeah. she really wasn't given anything to work with like at right. all. Like the scene of her like with Modoc and she's like, "You're a dick," and he's like, "I'm a dick." Oh, don't be yeah. a dick. It's like, what what is that? Yeah. <laughs> I I rolled my eyes and I, there are people in my theater like laughing laughing their asses off. I'm like. Come on. <laughs> that stupid conversation is going to get him to change completely to the, Right. Oh, my, that was a big <laughs> eye roll for me. Like come on. I I don't even care if we make Modoc become a good guy in the end, but at least let's let's, you know, do give better. him a better yeah, do better <laughs> yeah. than that. Yeah. Um, but one of my major complaints before I even thought about how nothing happens was in the first half of the movie they're so secretive about Kang and like hope specifically. And I would be okay with that <clears throat> with it. Like, because it was, they were trying to build suspense, but we already know, like we already know basically what happened. We don't know the details. Like, you know, it had to do with the, the sphere or whatever, but we see the opening clip. So I know that she did something to help Kang or she was, you know, with Kang. And it just, they kept building up on this secret of like, who is the conqueror and right. and what did you do hope and i was like you know we it's it's not that suspenseful we know that who kang is they, it felt like they were trying to act like we don't know who kang the conqueror is we've we've seen him in loki we've seen him in the trailers we know it's him just cut to the chase don't right <laughs> keep, I, so that that part annoyed me probably the most out of anything in the movie it just for the whole first half of the movie it felt like they were trying to be suspenseful but we already we already knew yeah so that was my main issue probably with the movie yeah that is a good point with like um i yeah i didn't like that it was like they already the, like i thought it was like i was like i thought it was like interesting at first how they referred to him as the conqueror that was cool but, but they did it like so many times and it got like super repetitive and i was like we know who it is like it's nothing really to build because the whole center of this movie is kang we already know who he is but and like the whole the thing with the janet being in the quantum realm helping kang and that like being a mystery and and her just like refusing to say anything kind of annoyed me too honestly yeah 
Actually, I keep... I know Hope. I, I meant to say Janet, but yeah, it was just like they were playing on this mystery with Janet and and Kang, and I was like, just just tell us, because she kept being like, I'm like, I can't do it yet, and it's like, yeah, just, all right. <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of wore thin on me. I was like, all right, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's get to the point. But yeah, what did you think about Modok besides the that speech we just talked about? What did you think from start to finish? Modoc. So, for to be honest, I haven't read much on Modok in like comic books, or haven't seen him in you know like animated series, or you know, I know he's in the Avengers game. I think he's like the main villain in the, in the Avengers game. So yeah. I don't really know that much of his character. So I can't really base it off of like my experiences with like you know comparing the characters from the comic books to the movie. So I can't really compare. But from what I've got so far. <sighs> The his whole purpose in the movie was not necessary. Essentially, like he didn't need to be in the movie. You could have the entire movie just like without Modok in it. I feel like they just shoehorn Modok just for like just to have Modok be there, like the one time like side villain. Essentially, um, a lot of people complain about his design, which I understand, but it's not. You can't really translate Modok from the comic books to live action that well yeah because it's it's a ridiculous character and he looks ridiculous he's an enormous head with tiny arms and <laughs> tiny legs and like just like mechanized like thing so you can't really make him look badass yeah um but i liked it when he had like the face shield on um i like that part but whenever it showed up his face i get it it's like for like comedic purposes and i thought it was pretty funny uh but just like they did what they could with their the design um character wise again wasn't necessary and he just seems you know try to be funny but really doesn't come off as actually funny like he he does like some like like quips and all and like they're okay but, like the whole like don't be a dick i'm a dick look at me i'm a dick thing i'm like i feel like there's just, like put that scene in here just to say dick as many times as they can because yeah, it was like they were trying to be edgy like look yeah. we, say, we say we say dick <laughs> right and just like <laughs> my favorite part with modok is like one like his backstory where like he how he gets shrunk uh in the first ant-man movie and he goes into the quantum realm he's like all deformed and like how like they, they put his body into the suit and that was like, split second. You see, it's like it's, it's like it's ash bare. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, that was like I love that part. I love yeah. that part. That was because like, it was so unexpected. Because like uh, for a character like Modog and just like to show us like a very detailed silhouette image of his butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought it was, was like funny. it was like the Iron Man scene when Iron Man's building up, except <laughs> it's a giant head with a little ass and. Yeah. <laughs> That that part was great. Yeah. And also, none of my theater laughed, and I actually laughed at that scene. And I was like, Not why really? is nobody laughing at Modoc's butt? Like, <laughs> it was, I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, like, they <clears throat> laugh at the, at the jokes that aren't funny, but they don't laugh at the jokes that are intentionally or, like, unintentionally funny. Yeah. But I, I think I have a different opinion than most on Modoc. I will say I do agree. He was not necessary. I, I fully agree with that. He really did nothing to the plot. But until the dick scene, I actually liked him. Because, like you said, I don't know like a ton on MODOK. All my MODOK knowledge comes from I played the Avengers game. I played um, Avengers versus... Or not Avengers versus Capcom. Marvel versus Capcom. And he's in some of that. I know him from like... And then... um. Some animated shows I've seen him in. Not I know he has his own. I haven't seen it, but I've seen him in you know stuff like that. No, nothing really in the comics, but he's never going to translate to the MCU ever. Yeah. I've seen people upset that he died, and I'm like, did you really want Modok to stay in the MCU? Yeah, like, no. <laughs> you didn't want him to stay in the MCU. I, I feel like there are people that are trying to, you know, act mad just to be mad, but Good. he was yeah. never gonna. I'm glad he's gone. But for what he did in this movie, I thought it was pretty fun. It was, you know, they're calling him Darren. I like the scene when Ant-Man is in the 
possibility sphere, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And he's like trying to call up to him and he's not answering until he says Modoc. <laughs> I thought the comedy, it wasn't the best, but I, I kind of liked it. And mm-hmm. I, th- I honestly thought the bad CGI face kind of just made it more funny. Yeah. That's <laughs> my thoughts too. Everyone's comparing it to shark boy and lava girl. With, <laughs> and I, I kind of, I, I, I just had fun with it. It's ridiculous. Monarch is already ridiculous. So mm-hmm. I kind of thought he looked, like you were saying, badass with the mask and the way they did his voice and the weapons. Mm-hmm. So I thought we kind of got the best of both worlds of kind of cool, really stupid. Mm-hmm. So I had fun with them until the dick scene. It was just so dumb. And then as he's dying, even like the characters, he's like, I'm an Avenger. And they're like, what? <laughs> I just thought the flip there was a little too sudden, right. especially with how bad the speech was between Cassie and him. I think if if they were going to do that, where he like becomes good, they should have had Scott talking to him because they had a history, actually give a good little speech. And then I think it would have been cool to see Kang versus MODOK, just them two, no ants, both of them fighting. And then Kang literally kill Modok. I think that would right. have been that would have been a lot cooler. Definitely, I agree. Honestly, yeah, <sighs> just that dick scene was. Yeah that that was the worst part of the movie for me. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think about all uh, the army of ants coming, carried away? What did you think about that kind of finale scene? <clears throat> so I, I did see a lot of like talk about how a lot of people are upset how Kang the Conqueror being this like. Avengers multiversal level villain being defeated by an army of ants, <laughs> which I 100% agree on. Like that's kind of ridiculous. But then you also have to put into consideration how Hank Pym said like these ants are like extremely like like extremely extremely intelligent, super advanced, and some people are like throwing like actual like science in how like proportion to their size they're like super deadly or whatever so like if they were human size they would have been like terrible like a, a menace to society if like answer like our actual size but i can see the the from two sides how a lot of people are, are upset how kang the conqueror was defeated by an army of ants basically just dragged away um but i also see the fact how people like, are defending that scene where these are a super intelligent super uh technologically advanced society of ants I kind of get it. I also do not really fully understand like why they chose that route. Um, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like slightly okay with it because we know obviously we're gonna get more Kang. Um, a lot of people say it's because he's like his ego or like his like his ego was like too like you know big for like you know he, he even says like you talk to ants. To Ant-Man. Yeah. That's all you do. You talk to Ants, and then like, he kind of un- underestimates Scott, so he kind of lets his guard down for a little bit because he's killed a lot of Avengers, and yeah. he's, he's like, and that being said, he killed Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, all of them millions of times probably, and kind of just saw Ant-Man as like a lesser one, so he kind of like lets his guard down, doesn't really take him seriously, so I guess that's what got the best of him, in my opinion. Yeah. I, um... <clears throat> As far as, like, the reasoning of it, I guess if, you know, he didn't expect the giant army of ants to come and they overwhelmed him, whatever. But, yeah, it it is ridiculous that a giant army of ants defeated Kang the Conqueror. It's definitely stupid. But <laughs> I, 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 I guess I just kind of didn't think and just kind of had fun with it. I thought it was, I thought it was fun. A huge yeah. army of ants, you know. We know yeah, he's not cool. dead. Yeah. We know he's not dead. I think it was almost just like a... It happened in the moment, and they kind of, you know, carried him away for a second. And then, obviously, yep. he g- gathered his bearings. Um, I had I had fun with it. I thought it was, yeah, it was I thought decent. the ants were cool. The, yeah. Hopefully, we get we get to see more of like that giant and that like that army of, of ants and some other project. Maybe King, Di- maybe that's how they defeat Kang Dynasty. Kang I, don't know, Dynasty. I, don't, I, I don't know if they could do that twice. Once is enough. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> they defeat all the kings with just ants. Just ants, just a bunch of ants, and it's like Scott and Hank, like watching all the ants take over the Council of Kings. <laughs> Becomes be the Council of Ants. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
I want to pose this question to you. How, how did you feel about uh, the quantum realm as a whole? It was pretty cool. Uh, it felt very Guardians of the Galaxy spacey, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of ridiculous stuff. I thought the little red ooze was fun, how, you know, mm -hmm. it helped them. Um, the people in it, while I like the actor, a lot of people, I forget his name, a lot of people wanted them to play Reed Richards. Um, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. I like that actor a lot. You could, I mean, I guess you could say they, you know, they wasted him as an actor, but... I, I didn't really care about the people of the quantum realm. I never, mm. there, there was no one, you know, there's Bill Murray, I guess, but I, I you know, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the scenery was cool. The, the, the visuals, I, I think, I think most of the CGI was good. I'm kind of, I don't care too much about bad CGI here and <clears throat> here and there when it gets to be stuff like uh, Thor love and thunder with the child, you know, then <laughs> I, I yeah. can have issues, but I'm, I'm usually okay with some lesser good CGI. I thought it was good, I, yeah. but as a world, it looked really cool, and I, I liked exploring it in this movie. Um, but if we never return, I won't care. It's, yeah. yeah. I agree, yeah. Um, I, I, after, or when I was watching it, and then after I, I was like, and after I watched it and saw like other people's opinions on it, a lot of people compare like the quantum realm and had like the like the feeling, the setting, the aesthetic felt like kind of like Star Warsy. Like I can see that to an extent, but like uh, I can also see like, how it's like its own thing. It's like 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 you said, Guardians of the Galaxy type feel. Um, basically, I I agree with every everything you said. The people you don't really care about. I know they try to like push like a narrative with like the people and say like help me, we're being ruled by the conqueror, you know, which they're trying to free him essentially, but we don't really we don't really care about them. The only characters I cared about was like that one like huge guy with like the the, the glass head that's he kinda cool. <laughs> he was I thought it was really cool. But then, you know, he died. So. I like the way he got killed. It was pretty cool. I know, it was <laughs> it was really badass. And just that whole fight with like this, like just Kang, just like blasting everyone. I, that was re really good, really, yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Yeah, I will. My, I'll say my favorite part of the movie, and then you say yours. All right. Um, and they might be the same. There's a good chance they'll be the same. But it, mine was the fist fight between Scott and Kang. That part was so like. That's another thing. I guess I didn't even think of till now. I think. For the most part, the action was okay at best, mm -hmm. but like, I don't know. I could just feel those punches, and Kang yeah. was just <laughs> beating the hell out of him, as he should. He should, yeah. Like that shouldn't be a contest. Through the comics we've read, you know, I've learned Kang literally trained himself how to fight. Like his older, you know, true Kang the Conqueror, he trained himself how to fight. So he knows how to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like he's Definitely. not, it's not just the technology he can fight. So I liked, I, I can't even remember what he said. He's like, he, 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 there's just some really great lines from Kang in there. He's like, you know, like you can't win. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to beat you into the ground. <laughs> and like that scene was just so good. What, what, what was, what was your favorite scene? I mean, you already predicted it. What that was my favorite scene <laughs> as well. That scene was good. Um, just like the blows, especially like, the, like when he just stomps Ant Man's head in. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah. brutal. It was brutal. All like, damn. And then like honestly, like Ant Man landed like two or three hits on Kang, but then Kang's like, with every one punch uh, Kang got, Ant Man got four punches, three <laughs> knees, and like seven <laughs> elbows. <laughs> he went full Creed three on him. I mean, it exactly. Was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could have been a promotion for Creed three. How he's gonna box in Creed three? So yeah. But yeah, that scene was great. Um, how, how did you feel about? Because um, I see a lot of people talk about this. How um, people were like really underwhelmed about this part of that fight. How like hope basically just, like overwhelmed them, and essentially they both defeated him. Um, at the end. Yeah, because I'm there was like the, the the portal they were trying to escape through. Um, but then like hope comes out and starts like shooting her like little laser things. Oh yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, I guess I like that because, I mean, if it would have just been Scott, uh, he would have killed him. So yeah, and then 
you know, obviously she's going to come try and save him. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp, you know. Obviously she's going to come out and help. I I like that part. I, yeah. you know, I, I guess I didn't even, I didn't almost didn't even remember it. I didn't think too much of it. Because, like I said, it, if they wouldn't have come and helped him, he would have he would have killed him. Yeah. Because I see like a lot of like people are like angry at that scene. How like they're like really? like yeah. I didn't really understand it because like it makes sense because King A is like pure focus on Ant Man trying to kill Ant Man, beat him to death, and then obviously it's got staggering when like someone else comes in and starts blasting him with like I guess like energy bolts, and like it's it's got staggering and then you know two people can shrink and grow in size like beating him. It makes sense because. But like I don't know why people are like because there are people who like don't like the movie, but like they their reasons to not like the movie is like so like yeah weird and like mm-hmm. they they choose like they choose like a specific part of the movie, but then they they're just so visceral with it. Yeah, what? I I think a lot of people hop on trends sometimes. This movie seems to be kind of popular to hate, and I don't care yeah. if you do hate it. If you dislike it, you know you dislike it, but I think you've got your reasons, but. If you're just hating on the movie because it seems popular to do, yeah. that's pretty lame in my opinion. Yeah. And like bouncing off on that, there's like, especially on TikTok, people are saying how like, like you said, if you don't like the movie, that's perfectly fine. You have your reasons. You don't like the movie. That's fine. If you love the movie, you like the movie. That's perfectly fine. You have your reasons why you like the movie. Perfectly fine. But there are people who say they did, that they don't like the movie because of the quality of the movie, like the script, the writing, all that type of stuff. And people are commenting and saying like, you're taking, you're like thinking too much of it. You probably had high expectations. You should have like lowered your expectations for this movie. And I'm like, it's not really the, like a way to view like a movie, like in, in that sort of sense. Cause I know I lowered my ex- expectations, but you don't go out and tell people to lower their expectations for, yeah. you know, a, mo- a movie that introduces King the Conqueror. Yeah. Like I mo- think, if anything, the expectation should have been higher. This this was supposed to be a big kickoff yeah. for just the whole future until the end of this saga with Kang. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't. Yeah, it's like a lot of back and forth, like people trying to justify why people should hate it or why people shouldn't hate it. But like you're entitled to your own opinion. Just like don't ridicule or put like other people down just because you like something. Because prime example, like I love Batman vs Superman. And a lot of people make fun of me and like say like point out different aspects of why that movie is terrible. But like, I still think it's great. You like what you like, you know. Exactly. I, at the end of the day, <clears throat> you like what you like. But I also think MCU movies are so different from any other movie. And like, you know, you're saying lower your expectations, whatever. But these movies aren't just like this movie. This movie was supposed to kick off mm-hmm. stuff. So yeah, you can't think of it like another movie that's coming out. MCU movies are very different. I think they've changed the industry. So like, yeah, I did expect bigger things in this movie because of what's to come. So yeah, I don't think you can tell people, Oh, well you can't expect, you know, stuff like that. Well, sometimes I think you can with these movies. Yeah, so definitely. Um, but I, if there's one thing to criticize about that fight, I wouldn't say it's uh, hope coming through the portal. I would say it's, I was kind of thinking it's another thing where I wasn't mad because the scene was so good. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I was like, why does he not jump through that portal? Right. Like, shouldn't he just jump through it? I guess the argument is he needs his chair. He needs the his, like, maybe, so his, his technology, essentially. Yeah. So m- maybe that's why. I, I But the, the whole time I, in the back of my head, I was like, why is he not jumping through it? But maybe maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Um, so overall, um, the movie, did it live up to your expectations? Did it not? Did it meet exactly where they were? <laughs> did it make you a more hype for Kang? I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the Kang stuff in a minute because I'm both worried and excited about mm-hmm. Kang, but the movie definitely didn't meet my expectations. There's good moments for sure. There's moments I like. there's good scenes. Another scene I liked is, you know. Scott teaching her how to punch. He's like, jump the right. uh, jump the press or whatever. I can't remember mm-hmm. exactly what he's saying. But there's a lot of good moments here. I think Paul Rudd, even with, you know, if you want to say bad writing, he's always really charismatic. I always, Definitely. 
I always like him in pretty much everything. So he killed it here. Um, Kang was great here. Jonathan Majors, he killed it. I think most of the actors, for the most part, did really well. Um, I, you know, Cassie, I think, was just given nothing to work with. I don't know her actual actress name, but mm-hmm. no, it definitely didn't live up to my expectations, mainly because, like I said, we start and we end with pretty much everyone at the same spot. Nothing really happens. And mm-hmm. that is my main complaint and the main reason I was disappointed. Yeah, right. Um, at least for me, I already had um, low expectations for this movie. Came out disappointed, even though I had very low expectations. Um, but there were elements that I did like, like we just discussed. Um, uh, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man was great. Um, like you said, Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd is like a very charismatic uh, character and, and whatever he plays in. So I always love him in whatever he's in. King the Conqueror nails it. it. was great. Jonathan Majors did a really good performance. Um, some of the other actors kind of not really didn't like didn't do good, but like they weren't given like yeah. you said enough. They weren't given like what the like, they usually get in like and at least in the other two movies because like I don't know if it's just me, but I just felt like some of the characters felt different compared to Ant Man one and two, especially like Hank Pym. He felt like a little like like more like different in a sense i don't know if it's just like the, that's like the way it's, it's supposed to be but i don't know i agree it, it just felt like they didn't have much to do mm-hmm. it, it this movie is like even the wasp she's in the title i feel like she didn't yeah. do I'm much of utilize. anything it was really ant-man kang and cassie that had the most to do here and Definitely. i'm glad cassie had the most to do here i just think she suffered the most from whatever you want to call it i'm i'm not a film critic if you want to call it writing if you want to call it you know, any of that, I think she suffered the most from it, but yeah, I, I, uh, Hank Pym, um, Janet, uh, Hope, yeah, they, they really didn't have much to do. So I, I, right. There wasn't much to, I know. And hopefully, uh, they get more substance and later, later projects aren't, I'm not sure if they're going to do more Ant-Man movies or just going to be like sprinkled into like, uh, New Avengers, Young Avengers, or anything like you know, like that. Um, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But now it's time for the best part of the whole movie: the post credit scenes. It kind of, I mean, they were. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah. I'll quick, I'll quickly say, I kind of wish <clears throat> that Hank and Janet had been killed. Here's yeah. why: I was ex- I was expecting that honestly, because. Really, like, what what else do they have to do mm-hmm. in the MCU? What What is there for them? Like, either you're going to let them go off in the sunset or Kang's going to pop them. So I said let Kang kill him, you know, yeah. show how much of a conqueror he is, how, show how, you know. So yeah, I'll just add that in there. I mean, yeah, because I was expecting, because like one of like, the biggest, like, um, theories out there was, like, they're going to kill either Hank or Janet, and... That then happened, and I guess that would have been more of like a catalyst for like the final act of the movie. I guess. Yeah, it would have given um, something, you know, like yeah, more like depth and more like yeah, more some like stakes. Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing I like to add at the end of the movie, I liked how they did with uh, Ant Man, uh, Scott Lang, how he was like walking down the street all happy that they, he defeated Kang, but then like he's starting to doubt, like. Did I really like? Is he really like dead? Is he really gone? Because like, even though he said, he he said, uh, if you don't let me go, more of me will come out. And even though they def- defeated the bad guy in the quantum realm, he said there are others of him out there coming for like war and stuff. So it's kind of like like the last five minutes. He's like really like either not so like, you know, happy walking or like, like feeling with like dread. Like did I just like doom like the entire like multiverse essentially so i I like that too i I think it's good it's a nice way to to, like end the movie because like not just like you know be happy you defeat the villain or you know look off to the sunset and like say like yeah i did that but more of like questioning did i do the right thing or not yeah because you know we know what's coming in the future we know the literal title of the the next avengers movie so yeah i i liked i like that part too a lot 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's talk about that that end credit scene. All right, both of them. It's the first one. Oh yeah, the Council of Kings. Great. Um, I thought it was uh, great. Um, and I know in Avengers uh, Forever, they did the ex- like one of like, the exact same panels of the Council of Kings in the movie, and I was like, they did the thing, <laughs> dude. That like one of like the main reasons I wanted to start this. Not like the main, but it was up there. Was I wanted to I wanted to have moments like that where like we right. read and discuss something in anticipation of a movie and we literally see it on the screen yeah. and I'm, it happened so quick <laughs> like already yeah like literally the panel from Avengers Forever that we read just showed up on the screen and it was right. so cool and like for like that like, like the slide the size of the, the the Coliseum of Kangs essentially at the, in in that like a uh, panel in the comic book there's like that one deformed Kang one and they did the, the exact same thing in the movie yeah, I was like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> I like. I remember discussing with you. I was like, "Are they primate kings?" Or they, right, you know, exactly. We were literally talking about <clears throat> basically that exact guy that showed up in the trailer. So and I like. I liked how like there were like some kings who were like just like out of control, like crazy, like, <laughs> like just cheering and like screaming. I thought it was cool, and like I think the with like, the base, they they're all like teleporting in, um, and a lot of people are having like theories how like that's. I think it's like a bit of a stretch, um, but like the those like platform teleportation things were like because um, a lot of people connect those type of teleportation devices with Doctor Doom because like he basically invented uh, uh, those that platform like the, like a time platform type thing. So a lot of people are th- are like saying how like that's like an allusion to like Doctor Doom or something like that. Because a lot of people thought, thought the same thing with um, Reed Richards and Multiverse of Madness when he teleported in because that's the same time device that dr doom uses but i think it's a bit of a stretch because <clears throat> king the conqueror was a time traveler so I'm pretty sure he can yeah. make his own time machine yeah um i agree but yeah um but yeah it starts with we see uh, now correct me if i'm wrong like I, I haven't gotten to really see any reactions to anything like i said because mm-hmm. i saw it last night but what seems to be immortus and ramatut obviously yep and then the other one I thought was maybe Iron Lad, or it could be the I forget the other one's name. He wears like the red, the Red Centurion. Yeah, he's um, yeah. A lot of people are saying that he's a Red Centurion. Um, if it is, it's the ancient is the choice of design they they did with him. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, nonetheless, having those three there, yeah, pretty cool. Especially in Mortis, you know, <clears throat> after. Reading that very heavy Immortus storyline was pretty cool. Um, do, do you remember what they were like discussing about how like, Kang was like the he they banished that Kang to the quantum realm because he was messing up with like the multiverse or something like that? I know the one thing I remember is they're like they talk about how he was just defeated, so they know mm-hmm. that he was just defeated in a sense in the quantum realm. Um, and then I remember. Ramatut and I'm got I when I first saw him I said Iron Lad I don't think he's Iron Lad but I'm just gonna call him that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ramatut says something to the Iron Lad guy about like they they seem to like disagree on something and they're talking mm-hmm. about that Kang I can't remember exactly what it is but my I didn't like like Immortus's crazy accent or whatever he had going yeah. on it was a bit the, much yeah. I but, thought it was pretty, like, doing, doing, like, that deep, raspy voice. I'm, like, going, going a little cliche there. It was a little over the top. Yeah. It was just still cool to see. Obviously, that's setting up Avengers Kang Dynasty. Um, I do have... I've thought of, like, a full theory. Okay. I got it kind of laid out. This is kind of what I've been... I've been thinking about this ever since I saw the movie. This has been the main thing. Not even the movie itself, the after credits scene, <laughs> which shows you what I, you know, what I think about the movie. Not much. <laughs> but here's, here's my theory. They will be like the villains in Kang Dynasty. Somehow, that Kang from um, this movie, Ant-Man, like the, the main Kang that disappeared, mm. he will come back 
and he will almost be like a good guy. He'll fight with the Avengers to defeat the Council of Kangs. That's what I think. I mean, it's not that far off because that does happen in, in the comic books in, in one aspect or another. Yeah. And there's a lot of people saying how, like, he doesn't really die because he just gets sucked into that multiversal engine. A lot of people are saying he gets more powerful in that uh, engine, like, world thing. So I think it's completely plausible that, like, that Kang or a version of Kang attempts to help uh, the Avengers defeat a Council of Kangs and, like, Immortus and Ramatut or Centurion and all that. So I think it's completely plausible. Yeah, I think he'll come back. And then I think, so the Council of Kangs will be defeated <clears throat> in Avengers Kang Dynasty. And then I think in Secret Wars, it'll the only Kang that we'll have will be that main Kang, the one from this movie. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be in Secret Wars. I don't have any theories for that, like how that'll play out. But yeah, I think, I think we'll see the main Kang from Ant-Man fight alongside the Avengers to defeat the Council of Kangs in Kang Dynasty. That's what I, that's what I foresee. That's good. Um, I did. I just saw this today, actually, <clears throat> which I was kind of, kind of confused because on TikTok they're already posting like the post credits scene all over TikTok. People are getting hyped about it. <clears throat> Since King Dynasty is right before Secret Wars, a lot of people are saying that because they're like, did you read the like the 1980s Secret Wars or have you like heard of it? I know. I kind of know the history of it, like the 1980s Secret Wars. Like, wasn't it? something crazy where they were trying to sell action heroes and they like pitted all the, there's some kind of like crazy history about it. That yeah. has always interested me, but I've never read it. I've read some of it. Basically there's this guy named the beyonder. who's like this like all powerful and omnipotent being who gathers the heroes and villains of the Marvel universe, puts them on a planet called battle world. And basically they fight and whoever wins gets whatever they want. Classic, yeah. you know, silver, uh, bronze age, <laughs> you know, storyline. But a lot of people are saying that a variant of Kang is the a beyonder, like the super powerful being. And I think that's like a pretty in, you got like huge stretch because like the beyonder is like, it, he's his own, his, his own thing essentially. And like, just like the beyonders, because we, in the 2012, I think the, the Jonathan Hickman secret wars, um, I know that Dr. Doom, like, either killed or just absorbed the power of, like, the, the species of Beyonders. And that's what makes him, like, God Emperor Emperor Doom, essentially, for that secret war. So a lot of people are, are saying that Kang might be a, might become a Beyonder. But I don't see that happening. <clears throat> the one thing I also thought when I saw, and this is, like, bouncing off what you just said, that post credit scene was, <clears throat> this is going to be a lot for casual audiences. It is like this is they're going down a pretty I thought they were just going to do Kang and just have it be one Kang. But they're like, obviously, I knew it was called Kang Dynasty, but I thought that meant, you know, maybe he he kind of ruled or he took over and then almost like um, in game where the, you know, Kang won and now they have mm -hmm. to come redo things or whatever. But <clears throat> I mean, they're going full out Council of Kangs. I mean. Rama Tut, I did not expect that. Like, know. blew me away. I thought, okay, we might see a Mortis, but you know, we're, we get Rama Tut now. Is he going to be in the Fantastic Four movie? It, there's this. Yeah. This is going to get pretty crazy. I think they're they're really definitely and a lot of like. I'm a huge Fantastic Four fan, and a lot of fanta other Fantastic Four fans on Twitter are saying that, like, they're kind of worried that they're going to make Rama Tut the villain for the Fantastic Four movie because a lot of people want, like, Mole Man or, like, anyone but Doctor Doom because Doctor Doom is, like, this, like, huge, enormous villain that you can't just really, like, do essentially in one movie. It's, like, you should, you should probably build him up to be, like... Yeah. The, like, the main villain that might be the villain for Secret Wars as he, as he was in the comics... Um, but a lot of people are kind of like iffy on the fact that Rama Tut will be the, uh, villain for the Fantastic Four movie. I, I guess I don't really have a preference either way. I think is Fantastic Four before Kang Dynasty or is that, is that slated for, I think that's, uh, Fantastic Four is the beginning of phase six. I think the first movie in phase six. 
Okay. I yeah, I, I don't really have a preference. If he's the villain for it, I'd be okay with it. If he's not, I'd be <clears throat> okay with it. I, I, yeah. Honestly, no preference I, just, for I just hope for a good Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> I agree. <clears throat> um, but moving on to the second post credit scene, I was surprised that they... I was surprised in the theaters when they did the post credit scene with like Loki and Mobius, but now looking in retrospect, it makes sense because I totally forgot like the season two, I think comes out this summer. It's yeah, it's relatively soon. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, I totally forgot. Like this comes out like this summer and like, we're getting probably getting more Kang in that. And we see a Kang variant, Victor timely, basically in like, I said, late 1800s, early 1900s. Like basically in this like carnival circus uh, area thing, setting essentially, explaining how you can mold and like change time, and then like Loki's like in the crowd, disguised with Mobius, and Loki saying that's him, that's who like we saw at the end of Loki season one, and then Mobius kind of like doubting him, like is that really the guy? Because he doesn't look that menacing, so it kind of really sets up the tension that's going to be present in Loki season two, which I'm excited for because I think Loki is the best Disney Plus show so far i agree i agree thought about it for a minute i i definitely <laughs> agree i <clears throat> yeah i i i'm just excited to see more kang in that i want him to keep being built up obviously it's not even just going to be kang it's going to be just all of the variants that right. seems the route we're going down for now it's just we're we're not really the council of kangs but just kang and his variants are kind mm -hmm. of so i i that also brings me to like that speech he gives um, Janet in Ant Man uh, Quantumania when he's like talking about the timelines branching, and that made me think of Loki. And right. that also, I, I I'm probably gonna have to watch some videos on that or something because, <laughs> like, at the end of the first season of Loki, it's uh, I forget what they call him, but you know he's basically saying he wants that one time stream, and then when they kill him. It creates. Oh wait, now I, I remember another part of my theory. I remember another part okay. of my theory, but I'll finish what I'm saying. He wanted just that one time stream. But when they killed him, it makes a bunch. And Kang's talking about. I'm gonna have to rewatch though. You know what I'm talking about when Kang's talking yeah. about like all the branching timelines. Mm -hmm. I don't think I grasped anything he said. <laughs> but the other part of my theory is that the Kang and Ant Man Quantum Mania is not only going to help defeat all those councils of Kangs, but he will eventually become the one at the end of Loki season one. That, that Kang sense, yeah. will become the one <laughs> at the end of all time. Yeah. When we just saw an Ant-Man, that'll be him. Book it right here, right now. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah. Exclusive Comics Run the World <laughs> podcast exclusive. You heard it here first. Place your bets now. But yeah, after, I don't know. I just rambled because... The, it, there's just so much about you know the time yeah. stream and but and like what mainstream you, audiences are gonna be very confused with like the different variants timelines because even if if they come close to like what time nonsense they did for Avengers uh, Forever, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> like it's already really out there. Like yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is I I wish I could see a camera on audiences during that speech he's giving to Janet of people. And they're probably like, what? Like, especially yeah. if they didn't see Loki. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But, um, what do you, what do you want to see? I've talked about, you know, my predictions of the future. What do you want to see going forward? Kang dynasty, secret wars, Loki season two. What do you, what are your hopes? What are your theories? For Loki season two, I'll start, I'll start off with that. Um, I kind of want to see, um, kind of like a timeline of like Kang, essentially, like them going to different points uh, in time where like Kang has been like you know prominent, like uh, going to ancient Egypt with Rama Tut, or going to uh, Immortus, or when they he becomes Kang. Maybe we get like a tease of Iron Lad. Maybe who knows? Uh, but for Loki season two, I'm just like looking forward because it's basically all centered around Kang, uh, because they're trying to find him and figure out who he is. So like, I hope we get more fleshed out Kang, and since it's it is a series, we get more content out of it. Yeah. So I hope we get a lot of Kang content out of that. 
as for you know Kang in the future of the MCU, <laughs> all I want is like that one panel from Avengers uh, Forever where he like, like starts like gunning down like a lot of like, all, all, like, like everyone essentially. He starts gunning down everyone. And like he's like wailing his guns around, like screaming, like, "I am Kang! I am the Conqueror!" I want something like that to happen in the movies. Honestly, that'd be that'll put a big smile on my face. And maybe like how you said, like that Kang will defeat the Council of Kangs. The three main Kangs: Ramatut, uh, uh, Mortis, and Iron Lad slash Red Centurion, whoever whoever that was. Because I don't think they confirmed who it was. No, I don't think so. Um. I wish they. I hope they would do like the thing they did in Avengers Forever. Where, like he just walks up to him, gives him like a little monologue, and just like, guns him down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> be, I, I agree. Cool. I hope. I hope we see some of that. Some of that Kang. We didn't like, see like, the giant guns in this, but exactly. I I want to see like an unhinged like megalomaniac uh, Kang. It's going crazy. That's all. That's only my expectations on it. Um, Kang Dynasty. It's gonna be interesting given how um, the lineup is gonna be so far with like maybe the Eternals, uh, Shang Chi, uh, Sam Wilson, Captain America, She Hulk, and all of them. It's gonna be interesting to see those type of characters go up against Kang because it's, it's still hard to like remember how like uh, Steve Rogers, uh, Iron Man, Black Widow, maybe even Hulk are like it's like not in the picture anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but maybe they'll they, bring him. Maybe they'll bring him back for like divergent timelines, variants. Probably bring him back for both King Dynasty and uh, Secret Wars for like one last one last time again. Who knows? They can pull an Avengers forever. They can pull Avengers <laughs> yeah. from different timelines. This, I think, <clears throat> the MCU. If they if they want to go crazy, it's in this saga. If you want to call it, if they want to really yeah. get out there, you know, I think it it's here and now. So. Who know, um, the possibilities are truly in this. The the evil they versus the, the good. The evil yeah. versus the good Avengers. You know we can. There's and, there's a lot. And they have the money, so they can't say they can't afford it because they have the money, and they'll know if they do something like that. And for King Dynasty or Secret Wars or both, a lot of money's gonna go their way. So I feel like they're, they won't pass up the chance on that. Yeah, but yeah, they're, they'll definitely do something crazy. Just what it is is the question. You know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, you guys heard our discussion on uh, Avengers. Not Avengers. <laughs> on uh, Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania, thus concluding our three-episode saga trilogy on Kang. Yep. But definitely uh, make sure to check out the other episodes we did in the past. But now, stop talking about the past. Let's talk about the future and a future episode we're planning right now. Um, we're doing a series called Wheel of Comics. Basically, um, I started the series um, on my TikTok. Basically, we put different comic books on a, on a, on a wheel. We spin it, and whatever it lands on is what we're, we're going to read and review uh, for next episode. Did you want to tell them what we're going to read for next episode? So we're going to be reading <clears throat> volumes, I think, one through five. One through five of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by IDW. Um, I'm pumped about this. I, I'll show it off whenever we start reviewing them, but I mean, I've got all kinds of cool Ninja Turtle stuff. I grew up with the video games, the shows, the, you know, all that. So I've cool. never read it. I think you've read volume one, correct? Yeah, the library edition of, of, of one. Yeah. And for the funny contrast, like you said, you grew up with TMNT. I barely did. So um, it's going to be a good, like, input. Like, you have long history with, uh, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I, I don't at all. Uh, but I did read volume one. I'll hold my opinions on it till the next episode of the podcast. Um, definitely check that out. It's a it's a great series so far to say the least. It's great. I heard a lot of good things about it, and I'm excited to read the whole like a good chunk of the series uh, so far for the episode. Yeah, and we'll do uh, the Wheel of Comics. We'll do uh, we'll spin it for a long run, and then after that, we're going to spin it for like a mini series or a shorter run. And then we're just going to kind of rotate between longer runs, shorter runs, um, and talk about them, review them, discuss them, you know, all that. And then also, I've got a fun couple segments planned for March. We're going to do like March Madness yep. style, uh, like the <laughs> basketball tournaments, but we're going to do comic book movies or comic book characters and just pair them up, 
and see which ones we prefer. You know, we'll get some hot takes in there, some controversial. No, definitely. Picks. We'll definitely get controversial. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of fun stuff planned. I think, um, I don't know if we'll do one of those brackets in the next episode or not, but we'll definitely be reviewing TMNT. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely, if you guys want to keep updated with what we're going to do for the podcast, definitely check out our Twitter at ComicsRTW. And same thing with our TikTok, same name, ComicsRTW. Uh, we'll keep everything updated, any ideas, anything that we want to you know, project to the our audience. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we uh, end the cast? No, it's been it's been fun, uh, this little <clears throat> Kang saga. Doing oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just... <clears throat> Just to see one of those panels come to life on the screen was so good. So cool. And I'm excited for more of that in the future. So I feel like we're definitely going to check out more Kang once uh, Kang Dynasty comes out or like it's about to come out. I guess. Oh, yeah. I guess till then we can we can read um, the actual Kang Dynasty comic book series. Um, But yeah, Uh, Yeah, where where can they find you on the social medias? We'll definitely read Kang Dynasty once. Absolutely. That close. <laughs> but, you know, follow us on Twitter and TikTok, comics, at ComicsRTW. And then you can follow me on Twitch at uh, Woody307. Awesome. And you guys can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Orion Scott Comics and on Twitter, Orion Scott Comic, without the S at the end. And with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed our review of Amman and the Wasp Quantumania. Hope you got, hopefully you guys are excited for Wheel of Comics Episode 1, which I am very excited about because I love doing that series on my TikTok and having it, you know, whole uh, like hour segment. I was just talking about what I read. It's much better than tr- cramming it in under a minute. So I'm yeah. really excited for that. <laughs> Dude, me too. Um, yeah. Uh, with that being said, take it easy. And just remember that comics run the world. <laughs>